And joining us live now to talk about this all is local attorney and former New York State Trooper John Elmore. The judge sentenced Derek Chauvin to 22 and a half years in prison today. Do you think this is what you expected to happen? What do you think were the main factors for the judge who made that decision? To me, that seems to be a fair decision. As far as police officers that have been convicted of, of homicides, that's probably one of the highest sentences in recent years. 22 and a half years for someone who has had a clean record um, it is a long time. The court took into consideration uh, the fact uh, that the family testified, they lost a loved one, that will never be able to get him back. And they looked at some of the aggravating factors, the fact that it was committed in the presence of a child, the fact that others assisted Chauvin do this, that it happened for, for over nine and a half minutes. And, and also, uh, I think, important factor that they took, although the judge didn't say it, but Derek Chauvin never showed any, any remorse. And, and uh, he was uh, uh, convicted of an aggravated factor of, of abusing authority. So I believe it was a fair sentence, a just and appropriate sentence. And four people spoke on behalf of George Floyd today, including a recorded video interview with his young daughter. Did any surprises come out of the victim impact statements for you today? I can just tell you to hear a seven-year-old child talk about the loss of their father that they're never really going to get to enjoy for the rest of his life was very touching. Um, the, the, the brothers, they, they, they would rather just have George Floyd back rather than the money that the family received uh, and, and uh, just wish that this thing never happened. And what do you think about Derek Chauvin himself speaking in court today, saying he couldn't say much? And then we also heard from his mother speaking on his behalf. Well, his mother doesn't believe that that was a homicide, but all of America saw what happened for nine minutes and 26 seconds. Uh, so what she said is not surprising. But again, Chauvin did not show any remorse whatsoever. And that's scary uh, to know that somebody that was working in law enforcement who was supposed to protect and serve the public uh, could show no remorse whatsoever for a cold-blooded murder. And do you think this sets a precedent for future cases involving police officers who are convicted and then sentenced of, cr of crimes? For well, crimes? certainly. Well, the fact that there was a special prosecutor that had no conflict of interest in prosecuting a uh, police officer uh, is, is, a, is, is unprecedented, and that helped to get a conviction. And also the expert testimony from the best experts across the country concerning the cause of death. And what was really unusual is the fact that Chauvin's uh, uh, supervisors and other members of his police department testified against him. There's generally a blue wall of silence that makes it very difficult to get convictions of police officers, and that was broken in this case. And this isn't over yet. Derek Chauvin is expected to appeal. He still faces charges in federal court. The other defendants still have to go on trial. So what do you think the timeline is moving forward? Explain to everybody what will happen next. Well, first of all, um, because he's facing these federal charges, he's almost, uh, if he gets convicted, it's going to be uh, consecutive time. There's always a rule in criminal defense that if somebody has both state and federal charges, that federal first, meaning that a state court has the authority to sentence somebody to concurrent time, but when you are convicted and you go to get convicted in the federal court second, then it's always consecutive. Uh, we'll probably see the trial of the other three police officers before the year is over, uh, and probably be much of, this, of the same testimony. And then as a result of this conviction, we're seeing police reform all across uh, the United States. And 22 and a half years, how much of that time is he actually expected to spend in prison? Well, a lot of it has to do with how he acts and behaves in, in prison. When people get involved in rehabilitation programs and, and good time, uh, it reduces uh, their, their time. And uh, Minnesota is a lot different than New York. I could probably give you the numbers to the exact day with good time in New York, but I, I can't do that in Minnesota. All right. Attorney and former state trooper John Elmore, thank you so much for sharing part of your Friday night with us. We appreciate it. And thank you for having me. And stick around through 630 for much more on the sentencing coming up on NBC Nightly News here on Channel 2.